hello and welcome to this episode of heart and health in this episode of heart and health we'll be talking about heart failure what is heart failure when i use the term heart failure in my opds various patients understand it differently some of the patients think that i'm probably talking about coronary artery disease some of the patients think that i'm probably talking about a myocardial infarction some of the patients think that i'm probably describing sudden cardiac death so what basically heart failure is it is basically a syndrome it is a constellation of certain signs and certain symptoms and it is basically characterized by some structural and functional abnormalities of the heart all in all which results in decreased blood volume ejected out from the heart there are various causes for it we'll talk about them in this episode so heart failure has been classified by ejection fraction which actually describes the pumping capacity of the heart it has been classified Uh, under three headings one is heart failure with reduced ejection fraction that is when there are signs and symptoms of heart failure and the ejection fraction is less than 40% this is the most common variety the other one is the heart failure with preserved ejection fraction where there are signs and symptoms of heart failure and the ejection fraction of the heart is more than 50% anything in between these two that is ejection fraction between 40 to 50% with signs and symptoms of heart failure has been classified as heart failure with mid range ejection fraction why this classification this is because the treatment modalities differ in all these three entities there are some other names that you'll keep hearing uh, whenever your doctor uh, talks about heart failure and uh, these are chronic heart failure acute heart failure so what is chronic heart failure chronic heart failure is when signs and symptoms of heart failure evolve or progress very slowly and whenever there is some acute or a rapid deterioration in the condition of the patient it is known as acute decompensated heart failure or acute heart failure the heart failure may affect either the left side of the heart or it may affect the right side of the heart whenever it affects the right side of the heart it results in right heart failure whenever it affects the left side of the heart it results in acute left ventricular failure both of these conditions present differently we'll talk about them later as the age of the population is increasing so is the prevalence of heart failure it is said that 1 2% of adults all over the world are suffering with heart failure and the prevalence increases with age males and females are equally affected there are various causes of heart failure and these include either coronary artery disease hypertension valvular heart diseases or some congenital heart diseases can cause heart failure or some rhythm disturbances abnormally high heart beat or abnormally low heart beats can cause heart failure besides this thyroid disorders hyperthyroidism that is hyperfunctioning of the thyroid gland or hypothyroidism that is decreased functioning of the thyroid gland can precipitate heart failure besides this muscles of the heart can be affected in various diseases these are known as uh, cardiomyopathy we will talk about them later these diseases can also result in heart failure and these include dilated cardiomyopathy hypertrophic cardiomyopathy and restricted cardiomyopathy sometimes heart failure may be reversible so there are certain diseases in which heart failure can be reversible and these include alcohol induced cardiomyopathy it can be pregnancy associated cardiomyopathy which is also known as peripartum cardiomyopathy or there can be stress related cardiomyopathy or which is better known as takotsubo cardiomyopathy in the medical literature sometimes there may be viral infections of the muscles of the heart this is known as viral myocarditis this can also lead to reversible heart failure how do we identify it so there are various symptoms which are present in the patients with heart failure the most common of this is breathlessness whenever patient walks he gets breathless and uh, when this is very severe patient might even feel breathlessness while lying down flat this is known as orthopnea sometimes patients complain that they have breathlessness 1 to 2 hours after falling asleep and they have to wake up because of this breathlessness this can also be a part of severe heart failure weakness may be present fatigue may be present or sometimes there may be persistent cough or there may be pedal edema or ankle edema or there may be rapid weight gain or there may be persistent cough with expectoration of pink colored sputum there may be right upper quadrant pain in the abdomen or there can be loss of appetite these are other manifestations of heart failure are there some blood test available which can help us diagnose or confirm the presence of heart failure yes natriuretic peptide which are commonly available either as bnp or nt pro bnp in your nearby labs are the tests which are used to diagnose or confirm the presence of heart failure 
Besides this, there are various blood tests, there are evidence in the echocardiogram, there are changes in the x-ray that we see and diagnose uh, the presence of heart failure. One more thing, we have to be aware about the triggers of acute heart failure. These triggers can precipitate acute decompensation in a chronic stable disease. What are these triggers? These triggers include rhythm disorders of the heart or there can be acute coronary syndrome or a heart attack can cause acute left ventricular failure or acute right ventricular failure. Triggers might include rhythm disorders of the heart, both anemia can precipitate acute decompensated heart failure. Acute decompensated heart failure can be precipitated by kidney disorders or renal dysfunction. It can be precipitated by hyper or hypofunctioning thyroid gland or it can be because of non-adherence to the commonly prescribed uh, drugs or the lifestyle which has been advised that as the patient fails to adhere to salt and fluid restriction or consumption of alcohol can also cause acute decompensated heart failure. We'll confine ourselves to discussion on heart failure to this only and in the future episodes we'll be talking about each of the entities that I've talked about, various tests which are available, various drugs which are available and the recent advances in the management of heart failure. Till then, thank you and bye.